In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own timeline widget in the all-new Adobe Captivate. Now, as I'm going through the all-new Adobe Captivate widgets that are included, I've thought back to my experience using similar learning interactions in the past. And I have to be honest, a timeline widget is something I've avoided, mostly because the material that I've designed really hasn't been timeline based. However, I've never been really satisfied with how timelines work, especially with responsive design. I've taken a look at the new timeline widget in the all new Adobe Captivate, and I'm pretty pleased with how easy it is to set up and how well it works across all your devices. Let's take a look. Okay, to add a timeline to your slide in the all new Adobe Captivate, we need to click on add new widget and we will select timeline from the pop out that appears here. And we'll go ahead and add this. In a lot of these uh, tutorials about the widgets, I've switched from uh, you know, one of the design options to another. This case here, I think what works really well for a variety of different devices is to use this much more tall and narrow approach because as I add more number of nodes, if you want to call them that, uh, you know, you'll see, of course, um, you know, the ability to scroll down and up and be able to see all of these different uh, elements here. So I have some content that's going to demand all six of the available uh, nodes for this timeline widget. You can do other things, of course, besides that with the alignment and spacing here. Uh, you know, if you needed to take up more of the middle and less of the width of the, uh, the slide, you can, of course, decrease this. But I'm always thinking of mobile as well. So uh, using the full width or as close to the full width as possible might be beneficial for you. But I'll leave that up to you. Like with all blocks or widgets in the all new Adobe Captivate, each block or widget is made up of a series of components. So you can turn on or off any of these particular components. I'm gonna be using most of these but you can see that you can select them here. If I want the title to be left justified or whatever it is that I'm doing in this case here, you know, I can keep that to the left. Um, do we want an image for each of these timeline activities? Yes. Caption, subtitle, and you're going to have, of course, your previous and next buttons. You can turn that off if you want to. Uh, but if you're going to do any kind of forced navigation, which I recommend, uh, you'll want to use these controls here. What that allows you to do is go into your TOC and play bar and maybe turn off the play bar because you want people to use your controls only and not Adobe's controls. So we're going to turn those off. And in addition to that, under settings, You've got this option to move to the next slide when the widget completes. Keep that selected because that will disable this right arrow until the learner has clicked on all of the timeline modes or nodes, if you will. So let me show you how to customize this. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can go in and select any one of these and start to put in your own stuff here. So I have a date for 1960. I have a date for 1995, 2000, 2006, 2012. And I forgot to put the title in here. History of e-learning will work for this. And I think I'd like to further customize this here. So I'm going to go down to the appearance section and uh, the first thing I want to do, this looks like an old scroll from like the 1800s, which, you know, is not really what my topic is about. But I could select a new image, something that might look a little bit more modern. Let's choose something from the asset store here. Uh, this is kind of cool, funky, modern. Uh, obviously, some of this course is about the 1990s, the early 2000s, so it kind of looks 90s anyway. That's kind of cool. And we can customize the individual cards themselves. So if we select the card, 
let's make sure we enable the card first. Sorry about that. And uh, for this, let's do a solid color. We'll stick with the light color there. Um, I'm not going to have a border around it. I'm not going to have a drop shadow around it. And uh, I think that's pretty good there. We'll stick with that here. So the first thing I'm going to do is customize the image for node number one here. Clicking on that will allow me to select another image from the assets folder uh, or asset store. And uh, alternatively, I can choose a, an image that's on my system already. And I happen to have that handy. So let's go ahead and put that in. And I'm just going to add the text that I have for this, uh, this particular interaction here. There we go. So there's one done. This deals with 1960, the development of programmed instruction. Uh, now let's move on to the second node. We click on the replace image icon. Again, like before, I have an image that's appropriate. This is 1995, so I just found an image with stuff from the 90s. And I'm just going to add in the text that I've planned for this particular part of the interaction here. And you can see that as I'm adding more text than what's in the default there, the slide is getting taller and taller. Again, with responsive design, that's totally cool. That's not going to be an issue for you. Uh, for the year 2000, we're talking about SCORM, the development of SCORM. I found an image of a zip file, which is very much related to uh, what SCORM objects look like when you publish them. And again, I've got some text for this that I think will work well for this interaction. So let's scroll down to 2006. We'll replace the image. Uh, in this case here, we're talking about massive open online courses. So maybe a bit more of a modern image is required. Uh, incidentally, this is a little off-centered because of the nature of that image. If I double click on the image, you'll see this edit image uh, and the preview. And if you use the selection handles around it, you can choose a new crop for that particular image that works better, I think. And go ahead and save that. That looks pretty good. So I'll just add my text for that portion of the interaction. Looks good. We've got a new image to add for 2012. This will be kind of like the, uh, the earlier one there where I'll need to double click this and just readjust the crop because the image of the person using their mobile device is obviously way off to the right here. We want to keep that centered. And we'll just add our text like we've done a bunch of times already here. And last but not least, 2005. Sorry, that should be 2000, <laughs> 2019. A little more up to date than that. And we're going to, first of all, select an image that I've got planned for this. This is one I've used in several other projects that I've created here. It's got the AI image. Uh, again, if you really want that to stand out, you could select a, sort of a smaller subset of the image to really get the, the AI logo on the chip to really kind of stand out there. That looks good. And we've got our text for that part portion of the interaction to add as well here. Good. So I think we're good to go here. Again, we've got the forced navigation. We've turned off. Let me just double check. We've turned off the play bar so that users have to use the back and next buttons here. And uh, this looks pretty good. Let's take a look at it and see what it looks like using responsive design. Okay, so here's our history of e-learning interaction. And again, we can scroll up and down as you see fit. You can click on these in any order that you wish. And then, of course, the additional material pops up. Again, when we get to the bottom, you see my left arrow to go to the previous slide is available. But the disabled next button is over here. And it clearly looks disabled as well. Let's go ahead and start clicking the rest of these here. Again, they can be done in any order. Let's see what this looks like on a mobile phone. Does this work? Yeah, it works. Everything's a little bit more tall and narrow, but again, it's all readable content. You know, you don't have to spend time 
trying to figure out how this would work with responsive design. Like in past versions of Adobe Captivate, a lot of time was spent designing the actual interface to make it work here. But as you can see, I've completed this interaction on the mobile phone and I have my next button ready to allow me to move on with the rest of the lesson. So I decided to also preview this using the live preview on mobile device feature that's built into Captivate. And looking at it on my phone, I see it's a little tall and narrow. Um, obviously, that's something you're going to want to consider. Perhaps maybe a hotspot widget might be a better way to go for this particular type of content. And certainly you could edit the uh, the theme, which is, of course, the all the text and the colors and all that stuff to maybe accommodate, you know, some smaller text in this case here. You can see that, you know, when I click on the final uh, timeline item, of course, my next button shows up. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.